some skeptics were convinced that captive bred lions could never be released into the wild. Would the lions be able to fend for themselves? Would their social structures remain intact? Would they be able to successfully hunt? Follow this engaging African story of a few extraordinary people working with extraordinary lions. Known as Alert, this groundbreaking program has one mission. Return Africa's lion population back to its former glory. We join the P and L lions as they walk and stalk. Meat preparation gets weird for some, as our volunteers make go. dinner time more interesting. As per usual, the Angamo Pride gets scrappy over scraps. A first time night encounter with Laili and Lewa provides non stop action and an impala's worst nightmare. A brave zebra stallion takes the fight to the ever-confident L lions. And a historical moment is notched up for Wakanaka as she proves her predatory prowess. It's early and Peña and Paza are fascinated with the lily trotters. Kenya, ever alert, focuses on something in the distance. The blessed buck acknowledge the threat and leave nothing to chance. As the peas continue their walk, we leave this inseparable pair and find the Angama Pride are full to the brim and resting peacefully after having eaten three zebra within 24 hours. Little Amadi, with tummy like a little tank, seeks attention from Big Dad. Amadi is Milo's favorite cub, and he always has time for a snuggle. Kenge arrives back from a short venture with her two girls, Kenisa and Cora. Milo is certainly in a good mood today, and peace reigns for the moment. Despite full bellies, the cubs are always on the take for milk, and Kenge gives in to their plea. Back to the ever-persistent peas still in pursuit of a meal. Impala or bless buck, perhaps. Not winning in plain sight, Paza changes tactics and uses the tall grass for cover, sneaking stealthily closer to the impala and bless buck. Kenya has the right idea as she crouches low in the grass and bides her time. Unfortunately, Paza didn't register Pena's cunning plan and all advantage is lost as she foolishly begins the chase. 
One day, practice will make perfect. But until that day comes, these young lionesses will need help to fill their bellies. Enter our trusty, intrepid volunteers preparing tasty meat for the young lions. Some find this task exhilarating, in a weird kind of way. Others are a bit squeamish, to say the least. Thank goodness for McKay, who hacks away at the beefy joints with precision. You're a kind of vegetarian, but now I... Amanda finally overcomes her disgust as she makes holes for the vitamins and minerals to be impregnated. Did my duty? That's fun to work. Somebody's got to do it. It's off to the L lion's enclosure, and it looks like Leili has a good idea of what's coming up. Girls, can you just take your pieces of, of meat and hide it where you want to hide it so that the lions will find them out? Yeah! <laughs> the volunteers choose some good hiding positions and this ensures that the lions use their senses and make a bit of a game out of it. Dominant, Laili targets the easiest piece while Lewa is left to think for a moment. But it doesn't take her long before she locks onto her well deserved treat. It's a delicious, bone-crunching experience for the elves, who are not the only ones gnawing away. The Angamo pride has managed to kill a wildebeest and are munching and crunching at the carcass. Milo struts in from a drink at the waterhole and seems more interested in marking out his territory. After rubbing his scent on the tree, he turns his attention to Fire, who has one thing to say. It's not Milo's lucky day. Where's the chemistry? Fire seems content to play with a stick for a moment, but she is particularly volatile this afternoon, and things turn nasty. As the dominant female in the pride, she gets her way, and everyone else has to back off. Narnia edges closer. Fire eventually calms down, and Wakanaka bravely edges back to the carcass. For a change of scenery, let's join Leanne and the MKs back at the enclosures. Uh, this afternoon we've taken out the MKs on, a, on another day encounter. The weather's quite cool today, it's cloudy, it might start raining, um, so it's nice and cool. Hopefully they're going to be quite energetic and hopefully we'll get a kill today. The M 
UK Pride is still part of stage one, very much a learning stage. Stage one, in essence, is the lions learning how to hunt. And it's that really important phase of taking them out into the bush on a walk. That is why they've been so capable to thrive in here. Their natural instincts are so strong, that if you put them in the right situation, they will learn. A lot of people think about it as a training exercise, but in fact, really, it's just exposing them to their natural environment um, and, and so they can develop their instincts. They will learn from their mistakes. Moyo sharpens his claws briefly and then, true to his usual self, throws caution to the wind and is off. Although he is sometimes a bit too eager, he certainly has a natural instinct to go after game. We didn't teach him anything. You could call it instinct, but instinct itself is such a difficult thing to describe. Some people, some academics, hate using the word instinct because what is instinct? You can't, in my mind, you can't really train a lion to do much. You accompany it and, and, and just give it the opportunity for all its natural instincts to develop. But as far as, in my personal opinion, instinct is the fact that these lionesses, despite being captive born, human habituated, have been released into here. The territorial studies we've been doing, the way they've responded exactly the same as a wild pride. And it's, it's amazing to watch them from, from young cubs, uh, the instincts develop from a very, very young age. The research pride are thriving and their social bonds grow stronger day by day, with play high on the agenda. Anyone got time for a game of slap face? On the other side of the park, the MKs are also on good form. Mika seems to be taking the brunt from all angles and replies with her own game of slap face. Luckily, these mock fights are carried out with claws retracted and little harm is done. Nightfall, the prime time for hunting has arrived. It's experimental time for Laili and Lewa, as Nathan and handlers take them out for their first night walk. The L lions have brought their A game and already keeping the impala on their toes. With the help of infrared lights, 
the camera crew are able to capture the action without giving the lions or Impala the added advantage. Lewa splits the Impala herd and confusion reigns as one Impala gets Laili's attention. We catch up to the dramatic scene, breathless but ecstatic that the elves have achieved what they were after. So a herd of Impala came, came out of the bushes right next to us and uh, the two girls just took off after them. Laili was a quicker one. She, disappeared into the grass and uh, oh, within seconds there was a bleaching of an oven and part of the court and this is the result. Now, I thought we were to see how they're trying to bite and trying to, trying to kill it but uh, it's exactly what we're after, exactly what we're looking for. This is them learning, learning how to be alive. Excellent, this is their first night here. Now here's a scene of blissful slumber. The Ngamo pride in a semi-comatose state, doing what they do best. The cubs are now developing their unique characters and researcher Ray is documenting their traits and behavior with keen interest. Anopa, the youngest female cub, is the gentle soul. Kanisa, the great explorer. Cora, the most tactile cub and mummy's girl. Amadi, the only male, confident, charming, and daddy's little champion. He has the knack of melting Milo's heart. On the other side of the park, the elves have been summoned for a walk and seem delighted at the prospect. They're on another walk with the two elves, Lewa and Laili. These guys are getting big now. They're coming to the end of the walking period and they're soon to enter the night encounter. So now we're going to go for some zebras. These guys have been getting quite close, uh, but they keep getting injured. Not badly, but uh, just a swift kick in the face is enough to make them learn a lesson. Recently, Laili was actually rolled over by a resilient zebra stallion. So it will be interesting to see how she reacts to zebra today. Zebra have come into full view, and the lions weigh up their options. With zero cover, there's only one strategy to employ. Chase. Laili seems to have put her horrifying experience behind her and leads the hunt with hopes of being able to get to the weaker zebra and bypass the dominant stallion. This kicking specialist knows he has the upper hand and challenges Laili. The elves are not risking it today. Perhaps in a few more months, the balance in power will shift. For now, they'll have to put this experience down to practice. A 
attention is soon drawn to a cocky crow adding insult to injury. The elves would dearly love to silence this irritating pest. Over at the Angama release site, perhaps Anopa and Amadi are thinking along the same lines as they are momentarily disrupted. With bellies bulging from a recent kill, all the Angama pride have to think about today is which side to sleep on. There is, however, something very intriguing about a moving object, and Kanisa cannot resist the temptation. Let's catch up with the elves, who seem to at least be awake and in tune with their surroundings. An alluring smell has confirmed an appetizing sight. Wildebeest. And lots of them. The elves have already been spotted, and these daytime stalks are seldom fruitful. But what have they got to lose? Lewa takes a direct approach while Slayili thinks ahead and bullets through the bush to cut them off. Okay, so we just come across Wildebeest and Lewa was in the front. She was taking the direct approach, but there was quite a lot of numbers and the alarm call started from quite far back. These guys are learning very fast and every opportunity they will take. But this time, sadly, Lewa went too direct and the wildebeest saw and ran away. But um, we're going to carry on and let's hope we get lucky. Back at bush enclosures, Leanne is not the only pregnant member. This afternoon we'll be taking out uh, two of these females who we suspect are pregnant. Um, the two females are Sahara and Babesi. Um, they've been here for about three months so far and they've both been mated with. Um, so we suspect they are pregnant. Babesi has a bit of fat underneath her stomach, her nipples are showing, so that's a good sign. Um, so we'll be, we'll be taking them out, we'll be on the back of the vehicle and they'll follow our vehicle back up to the breeding program where we'll be putting them into a cubbing den ready for them to, to give birth. Come on, come, come. So here's the trick. We have to separate the two pregnant girls from the other two females and one male by using the sliding gate between the management and bush enclosure. Sounds easy, right? The big male, Silwani, snuck through and refuses to be separated from his ladies. And even the fire extinguisher trick doesn't work. One of the cameramen thinks a warthog impression may just do the trick. Not quite the reaction we are after. And eventually... Sometimes you do wish that there were dogs, um, that they would actually listen to you. But this is a lion for you, he comes at his own time, but he's in now, so that's a good thing. Good girls, come. Come on, come. Good girls, come this way, come. Bubesi.
whilst Bubesi and Sahara are well on their way to the denning enclosure. Laili and Lewa are well on their way to making a potential kill. Even with sufficient grass cover, the wildebeest and zebra discover the danger and take flight. Without skipping a beat, Lewa streaks through the trees after the fleeting prey. The two herds had too much of a lead to begin with and Lewa can't close the gap. Completely worn out, she watches the last tail ender canter away. On the flank, Laili chose to pursue the zebra herd with little luck. Perhaps if they had worked as a team and worked on the same herd, they would have achieved a better result. Another valuable training exercise notched up for the elves. Over to Leanne and the pregnant lionesses to see their progress. Well, we're coming up to some of our um, night and cutting enclosures here now. I hope they don't fight. Um, there are a couple of females along here as well, so it's just it's lions native to fight when they see other lions. Uh, we should be able to get them away before it turns nasty. We just separate in some of the females that are or some of the lines that are closer to the gate so the females can see that the enclosure is empty when they come through. I think they're just a bit intimidated at the moment. Come on, come, 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 come. Sahara has her own agenda and slips past the handlers. Turn to plan B. Unfortunately, uh, Sahara got a bit frightened and she's run off. Um, she's mostly heading back towards the enclosure because that's her comfort zone. Um, we've now got Babesi back with us and we're going, hopefully going to find her and then try and coax him back again. We obviously have to bring Babesi with us. We couldn't put her into the enclosure and then try and come look for Sahara because they need, they need each other basically. If she sees Babesi, Sahara will follow us. But it just it takes patience, it does happen. So, but we'll, we'll find them and bring them back. It's always a bit of a nervous time when lions are moving past. Uh, they often fight with the fence. These girls just happen to be quite scared. And uh, one Sahara turned around, bolted off into the bush. Um, but we've got her now. She's been missing for about 10 minutes or so. We've got her now. We just found her uh, walking back to old enclosure. Antelope Park staff are always conscious of keeping stress down to a minimum, and Leanne comes up with a wise decision. We've had a bit of stress at the line, so I think we're going to take them back to their main enclosure um, at Bush, and then we'll, we'll try again. We'll try and think of another strategy, and then we'll, we'll try again. But at the moment, they're very skittish. Um, they're a bit scared, so we'll just take them back to the enclosure they know. We have tried to push them through, to the new enclosure, but it's just gonna it's gonna make things worse. So we'll take them back for now and see how it goes. But at least they had a bit of a, a bit of a, a day out in the park this afternoon, so it was good for them. The other lions look a bit jealous though. Good girl, Zara. At the Ngamo site. Ray is delighted with her discovery. Just come in for the middle research session. We've got the rest of the pride up by Waterhole 2, um, just west of here. Wakanaka moved off by herself, as she has been doing quite recently. Kuali then decided to follow. I stupidly didn't follow, um, thinking she was maybe just going to drink. We've just come down here and they've taken a zebra, which is just fantastic. Both of them, I'm more than convinced Wakanaka had a lot of, a lot of big role to play in this kill. We've also just seen a herd of wildebeest just coming towards them. Wakanaka has 
moved off from feeding and has gone straight for the herd, getting within 10 metres. Wakanaka, the firstborn of the Angama pride cubs, is showing wonderful skills, and the researchers cannot help but feel very proud of her success. She is just the most amazing cub I've seen. She's giving it full all. We're seeing her hunting every single day, and practice makes perfect, as we can see. Um, so thumbs up for these two. Wakanaka has proven herself so capable, and one can only imagine what she will be capable of in the future as the Ngama Pride moves into stage three. The next stage is to take the countries that we've been talking with that have sufficient prey species in suitable areas. Minimum 10,000 acres. One of the main factors will be competitive species. That our prides of lions can be released into. In there, there's also other predators such as hyena, which lions previously have never encountered. So we would develop, for example, at the Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe and the Victoria Falls in Zambia. We have two sites of about 30,000 acres each. Uh, there's an initial agreement between Burundi for a stage three release site. The lions themselves are doing fantastically well in stage two. They're, they're ready to move on. And there's also talks within Zimbabwe of another big five game reserve where potentially lions could also go. Yeah, I'm much more focused on the future now. Um, we're at such a pivotal moment now. We're on the cusp of something even greater than what we've already achieved. And I just want to get there already. Things are moving on very fast. Uh, I believe as soon as, it, as soon as the stage three comes, it's going to snowball and then it's going to be the issue of holding on rather than to try and get the snowball going. It's another beautiful morning at Antelope Park. The birds are up and about and so are the two peas. Paza clambers up a rock, shortly followed by Penny to survey the surround, and all seems quiet for now. Moving over to the Ngama Pride, all seems to be pleasantly peaceful until we find the Pride busy with breakfast. They must have brought the zebra down during the night. Milo has obviously devoured a large amount as he nods off, while Fire quietly tugs at the carcass to drag it away from Milo's firing range. He voices his opinion but probably can't muster enough power to fight in his gluttonous state. Back at the enclosures, the frisky MKs have been let out on a walk. A good opportunity for a bit of rough and tumble, and perhaps a hunt or two. A Franklin gives itself away with a distress cry and Mara cannot resist the chase. A scent in the air or a glimpse of something through the trees grabs the MK's attention. Moyo joins Mika, and they strategize from the thicker vegetation. Kylie creeps closer in the open. Mika flanks through the trees at a rapid pace. Kylie carefully evaluates the herd and is perhaps noticing the wildebeest calves. Even Moyo seems to be sticking to the game plan. All in position, they are ready for the takedown. 
Moyo moves too soon, and he's on a mission. Forgetting all stealth and speed, he bombshells the herd, and all plans of attack are thwarted. Moyo has once again jeopardized the whole mission, but Mika still loves him. After all, he is the boss, and who wants to tell him otherwise? Off to Ray Kukesh, who has an interesting experiment planned with the Ngama Pride. So this afternoon, we're going to be doing a territorial playback. Uh, we did a pilot test a few weeks ago. We've got a recording of five lions, uh, one male and four lionesses. These guys have never had to really roar in response to, in a true territorial defence to other lions. They hear the breeding programme lions here, but I'm under the impression they're reacting as if those lions are within their territory. It's not really a true territorial response. So we've been playing from the other side of the release site, these playbacks. And um, we're hoping with a kill, we're going to see quite a reaction, especially from Milo. So we'll be playing it at about five o'clock, so in about an hour's time. Um, and hopefully we're going to see some good reactions. Okay, we are just waiting for the second vehicle to position itself on the outside of the release site with the speakers. Uh, once in place, um, our volunteer coordinator is going to press play and then we're going to see how these guys react. And Milo's had a really good feed today. He's completely comatose now, full to the brim, but I'm pretty sure he's going to wake up just now once we start these playbacks. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he reacts, if it's to the full extent as last time when he was running towards the playback and roaring on such a full stomach. But with a kill, I wouldn't be surprised if he does behave the same. The speakers are set in place over three kilometres away and the recording is actioned. Jealous, come in. Once it's played in its entirety, just, just switch off. Don't let it play again. This is the reaction we were all hoping for. You go ahead. I'd say he's not reacting as full on as last time, but he, I think literally because he's got such a full stomach, he's struggling to keep up pace. Exactly as a wild lion should be behaving, e exactly. And now Ken Gay's having a feed now that he's left. <laughs> as the sun sheds its last golden light, we find Lewa and Layili on the prowl. An Impala ram has caught sight of the two, and Laili flanks down the road, hoping to distract the Impala, while Lewa cuts through the grass. The elves begin to work together, zeroing in on the target. But having no clear view of the lion's movements, this Impala melts into the bush and springs away. They may not have been successful this time, but with each hunting opportunity, we are seeing these two young lionesses coming on in leaps and bounds. Ray is still in the process of concluding her experiment. Okay, so Milo's just taken off um, towards the playbacks we've just sounded. Um, a mixture of slow, fast pace. We've not heard him roaring, but I just want to try and get a visual of him, see 
just see how he's reacting. Um, is he pacing? Is he roaring? Is he heading back? Maybe see if other females have joined him as well. <laughs> Perfect example of territorial defence. He's now been roaring in response. He's making sure whichever lions have just had the guts to come and roar, he knows this there, telling them this is his territory. The research team are delighted with Milo's reaction as he gives a final parting gesture to reinforce his territorial position. Conclusion, typical wild territorial behavior. Laili and Lewa haven't called it a day yet. Having not eaten for four days, they are still desperate for a meal and a herd of wildebeest happen to be passing through. Can the elves end off the day on a high? Laili initiates the stalk, and after an inquisitive face-off, the herd are on the move. Laili flanks left, while Lewa streaks to the centre and confusion splits the herd. The wildebeest have speed on their side, and if a baby calf had put a foot wrong, the lions would have been in business. That day is surely coming, as this pair build a memory of failures and successes over the months. It's just a matter of time. Some things to look forward to in the next episode. Two confident zebra stallions take on the ever-fervent Laili and Lewa. We catch up with the Angama Pride cubs as they perfect their tree-climbing skills. The L lions attempt to dig a warthog out of his hole. A new influx of volunteers have arrived and Nathan instructs them with an induction talk on how to treat, walk and cope with lions. We introduce the formidable sea lions. This foursome adds a new dynamic to the park as they demonstrate their hunting prowess. And Laili notches up another triumph as she catches a spring hare. <laughs> <laughs>